The following is based on actual events. But a lot of stuff has been changed. Rubes, you really need to do something about all this paperwork. It's gonna collapse any second. Yeah, I actually did buy a filing cabinet, but I can't use it. Why not? Mm, because I got it from a second hand shop and it's locked and I don't have the key. What? Why'd you buy a locked filing cabinet? Because, think of the mystery. This could have like top secret files in it or something. Yeah, that sounds likely. Look, I think it's time you got this thing open and actually started using it. This is pretty much what happened to one anonymous Aussie. Let's call him Mr X, who's now at the centre of one of the biggest security breaches in Australian history. You see, the files that Mr X stumbled across when he drilled into his new cabinet contained thousands of pages of classified information from the past decade. And it was from a group of the most powerful federal politicians called the Parliamentary Cabinet. The documents contained details that were meant to be kept secret for at least 20 years. I mean, this is embarrassing for the country. It's embarrassing to our allies who you know, share intelligence with us and assume that we'll be able to keep it. This is a blunder of massive proportions. Mr X took the files to the ABC, who read through them and broke some big stories, including the Australian Federal Police losing national security files laws that were being debated behind closed doors, and important documents at Parliament House ending up in the wrong hands. But the ABC decided some of the other files were too sensitive to tell us about. In fact, they were so top secret that ASIO, Australia's national security agency, delivered a safe to the ABC officers so the files could be protected. The release of these cabinet files has come at an interesting time because there are new laws currently being proposed that could make this kind of reporting illegal. The proposal by PM Malcolm Turnbull is aimed at cracking down on foreign spies, but some journalists and lawyers say that could extend to the media too. They argue that the journalists who published the cabinet files could have faced jail time if those laws were in force now. After some serious negotiating, the files were eventually given back to their original owner, the Department of the Prime Minister and Cabinet. Malcolm Turnbull also announced an urgent investigation into how the files managed to find their way to the second-hand shop in the first place. So this kind of stuff doesn't happen again. Ruby! Sorry. Oh, hello, hello, yes. I need to speak to your best journalist, please. 